The world is full of diamonds and gems, and we are having some of them here today to build this event. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Ailulu Fahmi, on behalf of Al Farooq Educational Center, gives me immense pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome to workshop on methodology presented by Department of Student Welfare and De Development and Department of English in association with our circle, Yes India. With this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our resource person, Mr. Rafid, Student Welfare and Development Officer Akshay Kumar Sir, Head of English Department Rajna Ma'am and beloved students. Without any further ado, I request Rajna Ma'am, Head Department of English for welcome speech. Hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for me. A very warm good morning to all the beautiful souls assembled over here. Today, the English Department of Al Farooq Educational Center, in association with our circle, Yes India, presents a super exciting session for you all a workshop on research methodology. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be too informative to you, nay, to us all. And we are blessed with an apt resource person for the session, Mr. Rafit, PhD scholar, Iflo Hyderabad. Now, with great honor and privilege, I move on to my duty. On behalf of the English Department, Literary Club, and the entire Al Farooq family, first and foremost, I welcome Mr. Akshay Kumar O, DSWD Officer Al Farooq, to this session. Welcome you, sir. Now I welcome Ms. Shahana Palot, Director, Our Circle, Yes India, to the session. Welcome, Shahana. And it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Rafit, PhD scholar, Department of Comparative Literature, English and Foreign Languages University, Eslo, Hyderabad, to the session. Welcome, Mr. Rafit. And last but not least, I welcome my dear students, colleagues, other dignitaries, present over here and all the aspirants who have joined with us and I hope this covers you all and I wish you an ineffable session have a nice day and thank you all thank you Regina ma'am for your earnest welcome for presidential address I welcome our very own DSW officer Akshay Kumar sir Thank you, Lulu. <clears throat> Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. Today's uh, resource person, Mr. Rafiq Chenaden, head of the Department of English, Ms. We are gathered here shop, which is jointly organized by Department of English, Al Farooq Educational Center, Research Circle, Young Abelian Students, India. Actually, <clears throat> we must be thankful to the students of Al Farooq. Al -Faruq. Because when I asked them to submit their synopsis of the project, which is a mandatory work in their final year, in, in their sixth semester, they were like, they were very tensed, confused. It was full of chaos and confusions. And I offered them this session. And at that stage, we decided to open the session to all because it will be very useful for UG students. There are a lot of confusions, again, I repeat, among the degree students on research methodology and all. So I hope, so I hope this uh, session is going to be a great one. 
and this is a this is the most relevant one i, I believe so and we we are blessed to have rafid here is my friend he's a nice a uh, human being is a good human being uh and he's the scholar of eflu hyderabad he's a jr of holder he's a good teacher mentor he's my mentor and all so so i'm very happy to share this virtual platform with my bosom friend rafit i i welcome him on behalf of our department and for your sympathy thank you thank you sir for your precious words now i would like to request research circle project director was graduate student at central university of punjab shahna s for the felicitation respected teachers and uh, the aspirants who joined uh, this very relevant session as sakshi kumar as a uh, at all and uh, i am warmly welcome first the honorable sikhist then uh, other uh, uh, respected persons and give all the recitation to this program thank you thank you now may i take the opportunity to request a resource person phd scholar department of comparative literature english and foreign languages university hyderabad mr rafid for today's session hello am i audible yes sir yes, so thank you all for those nice and kind words uh, first thing should we continue in english or like which way is comfortable for participants english or malayalam and so whatever you are comfortable with you can okay so let me share my screen Does the screen share work? Is, is it working now? The screen share. It's visible. Sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can see it. Let's start then. So I'll just speak English in my own. So if you don't mind, uh, it's a workshop on research methodology. I think I can take around one hour, and then we can have a Q and A. I hope that won't be too much time for you. And so, first thing, if you are going to write a dissertation, it's like you are going, you are diving deep to something that you don't know. If a dissertation that you prepare on your own, then why is it that you നമ്മൾ ഇതുവരെ ആരും എക്സ്പ്ലോർ ചെയ്യാത്ത ഒരു സ്ഥലത്തേക്ക് പോകും ഇതുവരെ ആരും അനുഭവിച്ചിട്ടില്ലാത്ത ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് നമ്മൾ അനുഭവിക്കും അപ്പൊ ഇതുവരെ ആരും അറിയാത്ത ഒരു വിഷയം നമ്മളായിട്ട് മനസ്സിലാക്കുകയും നമ്മളായിട്ട് എക്സ്പ്ലോർ ചെയ്യുകയും ആ എക്സ്പ്ലോർ ചെയ്ത കണ്ടന്റ് ബാക്കിയുള്ള ആൾക്കാർക്ക് വേണ്ടി റിപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യുകയും ചെയ്യുക അതാണ് ഡിസർട്ടേഷൻ ബേസിക്കലി അപ്പൊ നമ്മളിങ്ങനെ ഡിസർട്ടേഷനെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള കുറെ കാഴ്ചപ്പാടുകളുണ്ട് ഒരു ലൈബ്രറിയിൽ ലൈബ്രറിയുടെ മൂലയിൽ ഇരുന്ന് ബോർ അടിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു കുത്തി ഇരുന്ന് കുറെ എഴുതി ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന ഒരു പരിപാടി എന്നൊരു ടൈപ്പിൽ നിന്ന് മാറിയിട്ട് വളരെ ക്യൂരിയോസിറ്റി ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ക്യൂരിയസ് ആയ ഒരു എന്റർപ്രൈസ് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ വളരെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് അവിടെ ഇറങ്ങുന്ന ഒരു സംഗതി ആയിട്ട് ഡിസർട്ടേഷൻ കിട്ടാൻ അപ്പൊ നമ്മളൊരു ബേസിക് പെർസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് തന്നെ മാറ്റിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇത് ഭയങ്കര രസമാണ് അപ്പൊ ആ ഒരു പെർസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് നമുക്ക് തുടങ്ങാം അല്ലെ നമുക്കറിയാത്ത ഒന്നിലേക്ക് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ കടലിനടിയിൽ ഇതുവരെ മനുഷ്യരാരും കാണാത്ത ഒരു ഏരിയ കാണാൻ പോകുക അത് നമ്മൾ കണ്ടു വന്നിട്ട് 
നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യാണ് അത് പുറത്തുള്ള ആൾക്കാർക്ക് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യും സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ബേസിക്കലി സംതിങ് ഒരാൾക്കും അറിയാത്തൊരു കാര്യം നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യാണ് പറഞ്ഞു കൊടുക്കണം അതിനാണ് നമ്മൾ എന്താ പറയാ ഡിസിപ്ലേഷൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഡിസീസ് റിപ്പോർട്ട് എന്നൊക്കെ പറയാം അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ട്രിപ്പ് പോകുന്ന മൂഡിലാണ് ഡിസിപ്ലേഷൻ എഴുതാൻ തുടങ്ങുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ആ ഒരു പിന്നെ അപ്രോച്ചിലൂടെ നമുക്ക് തുടങ്ങാം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉള്ള ഒരു ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ഉണ്ടാവും ഡിസിപ്ലേഷൻ തുടക്കം അതാണ് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഏറ്റവും ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ട് തോന്നുന്ന ഒരു ഏരിയ ഉണ്ടാവും അപ്പം എല്ലാ ക്ലാസ്സിലും ഉറങ്ങുന്ന ആൾക്കാർ ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ചില പ്രത്യേക കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറയുമ്പോൾ മാത്രം ഉറങ്ങാതിരിക്കാറുണ്ട് അല്ലെ അത് നമ്മളുടെ ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ആണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പത്രമൊക്കെ വായിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക ഏരിയ ചിലപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യും ഭയങ്കര പിന്നെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ട് തോന്നും അത് നമ്മളുടെ ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മളുടെ ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് എന്താണെന്ന് അറിയാമോ so kindly yes. go ahead in english sir there are uh, many students who are non malayalis also attending this session so i kind of okay, request okay. you to go in english sir. okay so much so i will start again then so we are diving into the unknown we are exploring something that haven't explored before so then we are coming out and reporting it's like you are diving deep into an ocean and exploring some places that was unknown to human being before then you report it to the world outside that's how a dissertation or a thesis work you are exploring an area you are exploring a new topic you are exploring a new subject on your own and then you come and report it to the outside world the report is dissertation so the fundamental perspective is that you are looking at dissertation as a trick as a tool so that's the first part of it and then uh, the question is on what i should do the dissertation about what i should write the dissertation so in that case you should look at your area of interest so what interests you more in literature sometimes you will be interested about classics sometimes you are interested about recent issues sometimes you are interested about films sometimes you are interested about political issues sometimes sometimes cartoons so it depends so to test your interest you have a lot of things suppose you are watching a movie and something interests you then that means uh, like you are you have you show a specific reaction to that uh, suppose you are attending a class and everything else was boring except a few things that the tutor said or the tutor mentioned in that case that is your area of interest then you can work on a lot of things don't limit yourself to specific works of literature suppose uh, you might be reading a lot of novels and you are uh, a fan of harry potter you can work on harry potter like or, or you like balarama or you like pinkle or you like any you know child novels you can work on that so you are free to work on your area of interest anything that is related to the research so think about it what's your area of interest and work on it okay then comes the next part so i'm just giving you stages of uh, you know how a dissertation is made then comes the next part that is brainstorming once you have an area that's very very I tell you my story uh, so in it group for ma we have to write a paper for each subject so for example in a semester we might have four or five subjects for each subjects we'll have to write a paper so like for sometimes some subjects may not have paper in that case we'll have to write two papers one so for usual ma we we have to write a dissertation at the end of your ma but in universities like it no we might have to write a dissertation like long paper for each subject so that's a task there uh, when i started my ma uh, it was a very interesting course a modernist poetry and i was a student of science till i second this so i had some interest in science and then i understood that i can't do a degree in science so i took english still there was something sciency in me 
and then uh, I wanted to do something related to science. So my area was like I am doing the post modernist course, modernist poetry course. So my area is somewhere in between modernist poetry and science. So that's my area. Then I started to brainstorm. Like there are ways to brainstorm. You can. Uh, for me, it's like traveling in a bus or like in bathroom or something. Sometimes it it depends for each person. The most creative ideas come different times. So you just watch out for you when your brain is more creative, which means it's in the diffused state of thinking in, in according to neurology. So when your brain is most creative, uh, I just prefer that time for brainstorming and just think about what are the things that you can work on. And take the white paper. Once you have a, a cluster of ideas, take a paper, take a white paper and write down possible topics, possible titles, then come into something. Okay? So, for example, I wanted to do something on science and modernist poetry. Uh, so, uh, I had a lot of ideas. I read a few poems and I thought about it. Then there was this idea that struck me, which was the presence of penetrative vision. When you look inside something, uh, like X-ray beams look inside your body. So, uh, modernist poetry has this possibility of looking through someone's body like X-rays do. Before that, it was not much possible because human never had a tool to look inside something. After the invention of X-ray, we are capable of looking inside something or looking through something using X-rays. So this idea of X-ray inspired poetry, then we have the possibility of penetrative vision after that. So that is my idea. So I have something science like the area, then I came to a title. Now, how to title, uh, how to give a title for your project, for your work? Uh, that is a crucial question. In the given place, uh, these are three titles. Okay, so first one, second one, third one. Just just read these three one, three titles, and comment in the comment box which one you see or which one you think is most stable as a title for a dissertation. First, second, or third. Just just give your comments. Yeah, third one, we have one person responded. Anyone else? Yeah. It was a third one. Okay. Why the third one? Anybody has any clue? Why third one? So let's, just, let's, let's look at the difference between titles means interesting. Yeah, the title has to be interesting. So the third one, that's the nice answer. Um, anything else? The third one is more specific, right? The first one means music in commentary. So it's a very general title. Yeah. Third one. Uh, music in Tamandari is a very general like Music is a general area. Tamandari is it's a very wide general area. So you won't do a dissertation on a very general something that everybody knows. So you have to specify your topic. So that's uh, one reason. When we come to the second one, the sense of music in Tamandari cartoons. That's again a general title, uh, but a little more descriptive. You won't go with a lot of description when you write a title, you just keep it short, short as possible. Then the third one, uh, we have instruments and sound art in late and legendary cartoons. So we are looking for specific things, instruments, sound art. Sound art is 
an idea. It's a very recent run. It says it studies how sound works as an art form. So instruments and sound art made from these very cartoons. Then it describes what we are going to do. It's we are going to do an aesthetic analysis of trauma and very cartoons. Okay. So it's more specific in that sense. So we have time now. Then uh, the next idea is abstract. The abstract of the topic just says what, why, and how. Okay. So what are you going to say? What are you going to present? And why are you going to say such a thing in your abstract, uh, in, in, in your dissertation? And how are you going to do the uh, project? or do your dissertation. So this what, why, and how, you have to just briefly describe what's happening in your paper. Like, I am going to study this. This paper is a study of a term injury, something, so music, uh, or like a uh, presence of music and sound art in term injury artists. Well, it's because uh, we have a lot of studies from gen the gen general studies on cartoons. But we don't have any prior studies or analysis of specific music and sound art in this cartoon. And how are you going to study? I'm going to take uh, a few cartoons from 1970s to 1980s and analyze them to make conclusions something like that. So that's how you are going to say shortly in an abstract. Then, meet an OTP. That's very important. When you have a topic, you should be able to explain it to an intelligent, naughty seven year old kid. Okay? So suppose uh, you have a very fancy topic that nobody can understand, then you are not in the right path. This have to simplify it, try to explain it to a seven year old intelligent kid. Otherwise, you have to think about what you're doing. So basically, you should have a clarity of your own. You should have a clarity of what you are doing. Then you have to. Then you are capable of explaining it to an naughty kid. Why a naughty kid? A naughty kid should ask you. So what? At each each stage of you know your thesis, at each, each stage of your explanation. For example, if I'm saying uh, that. Uh, I'm going to study about X-ray in postmodernist in modernist poetry, like X-ray vision in modernist poetry. Then the kid will ask, so what? Like, so you are studying this. So why is that important? Then I'll say that that will explain us to understand the properties of how vision, how penetrative vision works in poetry, and uh, it will a lot of new ideas, it will generate a lot of new understanding about modern poetry, something like that. Then the kid again asks, so what? So it's an exercise which could help you to have a clear idea, have a precise, clear, clear, clear vision about what you're doing in your dissertation. Okay. Then another quality, another thing that an abstract does is that it motivates someone to pay a visit to the place. So now we told it's like going a trip. So you went to the underwater and you explain you explore a new place and you are writing the report of that journey. Okay. In that part, you are motivating someone in the abstract, you're motivating someone to visit the world you visited. So it's something like you're inspiring someone to read your abstract. Basically, you're inspiring someone to explore the ideas you explored. So it's motivation. Then we have introduction. Okay. Introduction is the stage after abstract. Okay. So introduction is like map of the place you visit. Okay. So you're visiting a place, a particular place, and uh, you're looking at you know, specific areas. In introduction, you say that in this report, I am going to say, do this thing, and then this thing, then the other thing. So that's how introductions work. For example, 
I'll say I start my dissertation with an analysis of how X-ray poetry, uh, how X-ray vision influenced T.S. Eliot in my first chapter. So my first chapter, I'm doing that. In my second chapter, I am looking at some other poet. In my third chapter, I'm doing something else. In my fourth chapter, I'm doing an, an, a combined analysis of all these poets and of all this. Uh, then look at how these poets represent the vision and have a general idea of modernist poetry. So like he's saying, what happens in each chapter? That's one way of one function of introduction. Then introduction is the starting bit. It is the beginning place of the dissertation. So what you have to do is uh, that you have to briefly say what the idea is. You, you can't delay. You have to say, I am doing this specific thing, clarity, and you have, you have to start the whole project in the introduction. Then introduction is like an entry. It's like an entry for someone who doesn't know anything about your topic. So you have to be as simple as possible to welcome the stranger to the world of ideas you explore. Okay? Then you're not a YouTuber, so you can't delay. Uh, like in, in some YouTube videos, you know the suspense or the key thing comes at the end, so that they'll get maximum watch hours. Right? So you're not a YouTuber, so you have to say the whole thing. You have to say the crux of your idea at the beginning that you are doing this specific thing uh, in your dissertation. So just say it out so that people know what you're doing. And they don't have to waste their time. If they, they should know if it interests them, then they'll read it. The continuous, uh, the later part of the dissertation. Okay. Then the next part is literature review. Okay. So literature review is something we look at. What did others say? Right. So it basically says. Before me, someone else, uh, you know, came, went to the same location as a tourist, and he saw these things, but he didn't see certain things. So I'm talking about those things, right? But someone explored the sea, but he didn't see this specific species of, you know, fish or something like that. Okay. So when it comes to ideas, we're saying that uh, someone else also tried to explore penetrative vision. But they didn't think about Excel. I am the first one to think about Excel. So that's how this review helps uh, someone to locate your work in the context of the works which were done before. Okay. So that's how the this review works. Then uh, one other issue is don't fill your dissertation with letters reviews. A, a, a common issue is that you talk about others a lot and you don't have to talk much about your own work. So you fill your work with quotations. So that, that's an issue. Don't be careful, watch out that you are not filling your work with others' quotes. Just say, did I mean, just say what you have to say. Just say, like, I have explored these things and these things are mine, and then you say those things. Okay. Then start with the reading list. This text review is a product of your reading list. Just make a reading list. The first step of you know working on a dissertation is just sit down, take a paper, and explore the possible readings you have to make in order to write the dissertation. Okay. It's just like you know, I, if, if I'm going to work on penetrative vision in modernist poetry, or if I'm going to work on Tom and Jerry, I'll have to have list out just Google Tom and Jerry, and then see all possible articles related to with that cartoon. Okay. Otherwise, if I'm working on poetry, I'll have to uh, look for modernist poetry, penetrative vision in modernist poetry. I can just go and Google modernist. Uh, and cultivation in modern poetry, then make a list of possible readings that would help me to proceed with my dissertation. So that's the first step. Okay. 
then type well. You have to uh, make a list of all your readings. Keep a list of all your readings. Sometimes we go to library, we write down a lot of things. We have like pages of notes, hundreds of pages. But at the end of the day, we don't know who wrote, like from which book we copied those notes. So when you're looking uh, at uh, those notes, when you're looking for citing those specific notes, like you have to say that this specific fellow said in his book this thing and said talk about him. That's citation, okay? For example, if I am talking to you about P.S. Eliot, I, I, I can give specific poetry, uh, quotation of the poetry in my work, then I have to cite, P.S. Eliot wrote this in this book, a citation. So to have a citation, you have to keep the notes of which book, which order, and page number, and year. So keep these things always with you, with your notes. Okay, next one is methodology. What is methodology? Methodology is basically how are you going to do this project. You cannot, suppose you are going to trip, uh, like, suppose you are going, to, going, going for a hike uh, to climb a hill. You cannot use a board to climb a hill because the methodology of climbing a hill is different from rowing in the sea. So, the methodology is different for these two things. For example, you cannot use a methodology of science in order to work on a literature project. So you should have a methodology of, uh, you know, literature. Because methodologies are different for humanities. Methodology of science is different from methodology of humanities. Methodology of literature is different. So there's a long discussion, which is kind of, I know, not very suitable for this person. Just briefly say, we have a lot of interdisciplinary uh, researchers coming now. Okay. In this case, uh, we look at science research. For example, uh, my work for the penetrative vision in modernist poetry was an interdisciplinary work in the sense that. I have to work on literature as well as science at the same time. So these two disciplines, discipline of science and discipline of literature, comes together in this honest. So this mixing of disciplines is something that interests in contemporary discussions a lot. In those cases, we have to have a clarity about these two methodologies and see how we are capable, how it is possible to combine these methodologies. That's, that's something uh, crucial uh, when you are looking for detailed researches, okay, that we'll, uh, we can explore later if uh, you know, we are going for some researches in depth. Okay. Then, what is methodology of humanities? That's, a, that's an interesting question. What's methodology of humanities? Does humanities have a methodology? Does literature have a methodology of its own? How it is different from sciences? This, it's, it, these are like very specific detailed questions. Okay. Then, a few things which we have to take care of. Okay. First one is plagiarism. Uh, Plagiarism, you might know that you, know, you shouldn't have a copy of someone else's work in your work. Okay, basically, research is that you're getting your data, you're getting information from other people. So that's how research works. But the problem is you have to give credit to others who work before you and say that I got this specific and then from this specific fellow or this specific book. So you have to give credit, you have to acknowledge that. Otherwise, you will uh, get caught for plagiarism. So, uh, we have a lot of plagiarism sectors of this. You know, so once you have a paper, put your paper in the plagiarism sector 
and see how much you have, you know, in copy, how much plagiarism gets detected in your work. Uh, usually it depends. Some universities say 3% of plagiarism is a problem, some say 4, some say 5, so it depends. So just, you know, look at how much plagiarism you can have in your work according to the university, your university, and use a plagiarism checker, see if it's problematic. Next one on the right is punctuation. Uh, punctuation is another detailed discussion again, uh, but uh, just be careful about your punctuation. Be careful about your language, your grammar. Okay, but punctuation comes with MLS time. That's why I'm talking about punctuation. Uh, Modern Languages Association (MLA) is the style guide for writing dissertations for literature students. So MLA says. MLA has specific rules for punctuations. Uh, can anyone please tell which are the punctuations given there? Which is the first one? You can come in under the heading punctuation. Okay, first one is colon, second one is semicolon, and third one is a hyphen. Where do we use a colon? Where do we use a semicolon? Where do we use a hyphen? If there is a complete break of meaning, that means uh, it's a semantic break or something, if there is a complete break of meaning, we use a full stop, right? After full stop, the meaning doesn't continue to the next sentence so there is a total break that's the final stop that's a full stop it's a, it's a full stop in that sense if there is some meaning that moves to the next sentence it's a colon if some more meaning it's, it's a little more transparent and there is a more meaning connection between these two parts on the two sides of punctuation it has to be a semicolon so a colon is prevents uh, more meaning than the semicolon. In the sense, semicolon is more transparent for meaning than the colon. Then we have a hyphen. Hyphen is also like this. Hyphen allows a kind of meaning connection between those, these two sentences. So these three things we might not be very familiar with. So I just mentioned it. Then we have findings. Okay. Okay, then in this session, uh, uh, we have a few things towards the end, which are the discussions. So I have to mention uh, how I perceive the dissertation, how I you know, did uh, this, uh, uh, the particular analysis. Specifically, when you say that my work on these specific things, you know, looking looks at these specific areas, so when you have all this, then you have to actually do the thing. You have to actually do the analysis, okay? So when you look at penetrative vision, or when you look at music in commentary, you have to say, uh, you have to take a specific set of cartoons from uh, for 10 years, or for two years, or five years, you have to take those cartoons and see how the music is used, how the, uh, music art or sound art is used in those cartoons and you have to say it. so that is the analysis part that is the discussion part and then you have to see what's the outcome how how music works and what do you think or what what are your findings about the sound art in terms so that's your finding okay so you find something and you say that i found these things with my analysis, as a result of my analysis. So that's your findings. And then you have the analysis, as I said. Analysis and discussions are like to not separate in the sense analysis or discussions or readings. These three things can do the same function in a dissertation. For example, in a treasure uh, dissertations, you cannot do a lot of analysis as uh, science people does. So you'll have to uh, just minimize your 
view your, your eagerness to analyze them, but instead you have to read them. So it's a reading, it's not an analysis. And you have to discuss the words. It's not an analysis, it's a discussion of Shakespeare. You don't analyze Shakespeare a lot, because Shakespeare is meant to be read, not to be analyzed. That's the point of it. Okay. So analysis, discussion, or read. Then we have conclusion. You can see uh, that is what's written upside down. That's introduction. Okay. So is conclusion an upside down version of introduction? That's uh, something we usually say. People say uh, you have to say something in the introduction, and conclusion has to be the upside down version of what you have said. For example, I say that there is a penetrative division in postmodern poetry uh, in my conclusion, but I have to introduce something like, I am looking if, if there is any penetrative vision in postmodern poetry, but when it comes to the conclusion, I just reverse the whole point. I say, I found there is some penetrative vision, and I found something and something in the, in the introduction. On the other way, you're saying that you're looking for something, something, something. But that's how introduction and conclusion works. You know, according to uh, the next idea, but you have to include a lot more things in conclusion. You have to have a reverse version of introduction, that's for sure. After that, you have to say a little more things like, uh, does this work help anyone? Does this work, you know, yield any important insights that didn't exist before? Does this work help the people to figure out a way? To read literature, a new way to understand literature. So uh, that's how your conclusion should work. And the conclusion should be very limited. You don't have to say a lot of things. You don't have to say anything new. Okay? You are already saying a conclusion of anything and everything you said in the rest of the dissertation. If you are talking anything new in the conclusion, uh, that means uh, you can write a new paper on that new thing. Okay. In the conclusion, you're just concluding the whole thing that's already discussed before in your dissertation. Okay. So that's how a conclusion works. And a conclusion is the punch of your work. It's the crux of your work. So you have to be very vigilant. You have to be very packed in conclusion. You have to say everything. You have to, you know, you know, just claim that the nation has done something important. So that's how, that's how conclusion is important than other parts of the discipline. Okay. So we have talked about how to do uh, a dissertation, how to write a dissertation. So what first? So suppose we, you, we all get super excited, super interested about writing a dissertation. I don't know. So in that case, you have to just go home and see uh, you know what to do first right you have to make a timeline that's very important you have to have a clear timeline you have to start at some point then do something else after that then do something else after that then then then, then. It, it has to be like this okay i don't know how much time you have you guys might have uh, four months or something to finish the dissertation Okay, in that case, uh, <coughs> just make a reading list, as I said. Uh, make a list of all possible readings that would help your work. That would take around a week, okay? Within one week, you can make a reading list. Then you should make a category of primary and secondary works. What's primary and what's secondary? A primary work is something uh, that you read as uh, your key work. For example, uh, if I'm looking at uh, penetrative vision in modernist poetry, my primary work is, uh, it's a work, suppose, suppose I take a poem by T.S. Eliot as a literature student, my primary work is the poetry, is the poem, okay? And my secondary work is anything that would help me to relate to the other things that Eliot talks about. Suppose Eliot talks about a specific uh, light in his poetry, 
and I'm reading about the light, and I got an article about the light that Eliot talks in his poetry. In that case, that article about the light is my secondary one, and the poem is my primary one. For a literature student, a primary work is always a literary work. If, if, if you are doing a core literature research, in that case, your primary work can be a poetry, the primary work can be uh, a novel, uh, something like a short story, or like if, if it's not a core literature research, you can work on paintings. In that case, the painting is your, is, is your primary work. Uh, you can work on songs. In that case, the song is your primary work. And anything related that would help you in your dissertation is your secondary work. Okay? So just read your primary work. It will take time. So it will take around three weeks to read your primary works. Then read your secondary works first. Always go for the primary work first. Then look at the secondary after that. So like reading secondary works will take a lot more time. It will take around five weeks, for example. And then analysis. So uh, <coughs> this idea. In, it is week one, it's not weeks one, it's week one. In the first week, you have a reading list. In the third week, you have uh, finished the primary readings. In the fifth week, you will have finished the secondary readings. In the second month, you might have a form of analysis with you. And then there is the first draft of your work. So a dissertation can be around 40, 50 pages. So. If you have a 30 page of pages write up by the third month, because it's a three months continuous work, suppose if you work one hour a day or like two hours a day, you can make you know a 30, 40 pages write up within three months. That's possible. It's not it's not a huge task. So you can so, so you'll have a first draft by the third month, then there are revisions, uh, for example. Uh, I had uh, for the modernist poetry assignment, modernist poetry project, I think I had four drafts. You can have as many drafts as you want or as many drafts as your guide or supervisor suggests you. So first you will have, if you have submitted something first, then the supervisor said you have to make certain edits. That means you have to write a second draft. Okay? Then you have a third draft if there's, there are any more edits. And, uh, you can have a fifth or sixth draft and finally submit it by like the fourth month or fifth month as you like. So it's a time schedule. Uh, one more thing, <coughs> when you write, you should have a core reading and an analysis. So oh, my teacher uh, used to say that your readings are like bones in your body. In your body, the bones give the structure, the basic structure. And then you have flesh, right? So flesh covers the, uh, the bones to make the body. <coughs> so like this, the flesh is the analysis. First you have your readings, you have your poems, you have your uh, novels, you have your short stories, as the bones, the structures of your work. Then cover them, connect them, link them with your analysis, like flesh covers body. Okay. Uh, These are three books which might help you to have an idea of a dissertation writing. The first one is MLA Handbook. MLA style takes a long discussion. If, but this book is very simple. If you are interested in MLA Handbook, just read this book. It's like uh, 50, 60 pages around. And uh, it's very rare friendly in your font because this font is big and the alignment is a kind of mobile friendly. You can read it. Or um, you can read it very conveniently. Or you can just uh, Google, for example, there are websites like OWN Predu, P R E D U, which helps you to, which guides you through citing. For example, uh, how to give, uh, I'm citing a poem from T.S. Eliot, or I'm citing a play by William Shakespeare, suppose, then I have to copy paste the play part, 
in my paper then give a bracket like and say Shakespeare then comma and then the page number right so inside the bracket you have the author's name uh, sorry there is a comma author's name and the page number okay so this is specific specific citation method uh, likewise in the end you have a bibliography list right you may become the author so there is a specific style this is a specific way of writing uh, your bibliography that's according to the MLA style. That style is called MLA, Modern Linguistic Association. So uh, you can either follow MLA from their handbook, it's very readable, it's very reader friendly, or you can look for other sites which guide you through MLA. Then there's a book uh, by Wendy Laura Belshitz, which uh, the uh, idea of this book it's very useful but it's very costly. I attended one of her workshops, Wendy's workshop, and she's a very nice fellow. And uh, they have a Facebook group, and anybody can be a part of that Facebook group. If you are like, more interested about academic writing, citation, and all, uh, you can just Google Wendy and join her FB group, be a part of the academic writing community. And then the third one, this book I haven't read, uh, finish your dissertation once and for all. It's again something that helps you to you know to go through the entire process of dissertation writing. Uh, it, it's not just about writing the thing or typing the thing. It's also about the life. It's also, it's also about how to manage the time and a lot more than just writing. So that's how it's important. Okay. Then these are some tools that will help you. Or oh, in writing session, these are like some are apps, some are software, some are uh, websites. I just give a brief look. You can just take a screenshot of this and have an idea. The first one is Notion, um, something that helped me a lot personally. Uh, Notion is a tool that will help you to keep up your, your time, to manage your time. To keep your schedules, to make notes. The importance of Notion is that Notion is a time management app as well as it's a note taking app. So, Notion says it's a place for everything. So, if, if, if you have a Notion account, I can help, I can send you templates for working around a dissertation if you're interested. Then, Asana and Trello. Asana and Trello are purely time management apps. I haven't used them because I use Notion. If you're interested in other softwares, you can go for us and well done. Then comes the second row is about note taking, these two things. Uh, first one is Microsoft Notes. Then the other one is Evernote. You might be familiar with uh, OneNote and Evernote. Evernote I haven't used, but people say it's very convenient. Uh, OneNote I used to use. Uh, still I use. Uh, it's very convenient. You can just suppose you go to a library and you have uh, a book and you have you know some, you have to type. Just open the OneNote app and uh, in like open the uh, your camera. Take a picture of the first page. This means the first first page in the sense the page which contains uh, the title of the book, or this book, or this name, uh, year of publication, etc. Just capture the picture and save it, like uh, drag the picture into one note, then it will be saved there. So, or you can have a note filled with captured images. You can just capture a page from a book instead of writing down the content. So it's as easy. Then these two are two extra solutions. First one is my noise. My noise is something that will help you if you're working in a noisy environment. You can just uh, plug in your microphone and choose uh, something that helps you to concentrate on your work. My noise has an, a really nice collection of voices, noises, and music uh, that will help you to focus and work productively. So that's a, basically a productivity tool. Uh, and the one is Forest. The one that I can near to it, that's again a productivity tool, but uh, 
<laughs> it was a little bit slightly differently. You'll have to just plant a tree. You might be familiar with it. Plant a tree and keep your phone intact. So if you keep your phone like 20 minutes without any use, the tree will grow. So this app won't allow you to use other apps while you're using this one. So just turn this on for 25 minutes or 30 minutes, and you can focus on your work. In that time, you won't see WhatsApp messages, you won't see Instagram notifications. So it helps you to focus on your work. Then comes the research part. So now you have uh, the time management is done, the note taking, you are ready for that. Then you are ready to focus. Then now you have to do the actual work, right? Now you have InfliNet and Shodganga. These two are really good uh, literature reservoirs in the sense um, you will get a lot of previous theses, previous dissertations, previous papers written in India. So you will get a lot of works by students from other universities. You can go through them and see what they have done before you. And we have these three are uh, Project News, JSTOR, and Ethos. Uh, so the first one is a thesis directory of UK, but it has a lot. It's one of the largest uh, collection of e online e thesis. So in that sense, that's a really helpful tool. Then you might be familiar with JSTOR. It's uh, one of the largest databases of journal articles. You'll get a lot of articles related to your work. Just go to JSTOR and search your topic there. You will get to see a lot of works about that. Project news is the same. It's like JSTOR. You just go there, search your topic. You'll get a lot of time. Then, now you have notes, and you have research, and you have your work. Now you have to do the citation part. Okay? You have to keep your words citation very properly. Like you have to say, I got this from, from this from a specific author uh, from this specific book. So the simplest tool is ECD. This one is I used to use ECD for a long time. Uh, now I'm planning to switch to Mendeley, so I've got what Mendeley do. ECD is a really good solution in the for especially for students. So when you start working on a topic, suppose, and you have a reading list, okay. And at the end, you have to cite all these readings. You have to, or you don't have to manually type, uh, do the bibliography. But at the end of your paper, you should have a bibliography. So instead of manually typing the bibliography yourself, you just uh, give the title and details of your work to ECD, and they will create the citation for you. Okay, it's a free service again. And Zotero is uh, a citation solution that's paid. So I won't recommend that. And Mentally is a free version. The good thing about Mentally is that they have a Microsoft Word extension. So at the time you're writing a thesis, you will have your citations ready automatically. You don't have to do anything. It will just do everything for you. So those are citations. And then we have Grammarly. So <laughs> you might be very familiar with this tool. Uh, Grammarly has a lot of advantages. It, they have a premium paid version, but their free version is also pretty good. You can work with Grammarly uh, to edit your uh, papers, uh, do one thing. Don't just turn on Grammarly when you type. Once you have written the whole thing, like you have written a chapter, you have written two, three pages, then just copy paste the content or upload the document to Grammarly and edit. Don't do the typing and editing at the same time because it will consume a lot of time. Okay, so we have uh, these rounds I wanted to talk about and um, thank you. So we have to mention different stages of dissertation. Okay, so then we talked about different books, tools which will help you. Then we have an idea of timeline. So we have just had a brief session of how to do a dissertation. Uh, now if you have any questions or any suggestions, it's open for you all.
Hello, sir. Am I am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Let's go on. Uh, okay. Uh, so nice meeting you. Uh, my question is not regarding research methodology, but rather it is regarding uh, the politics of the department, research and employability. So basically, I have two concerns. Since you are from FLU and from CL department, I thought you are the right person to ask about it. Uh, sir, I do my MA from C in the CL department at Jadavpur University. So basically, the first concern is uh, these days. I don't think any of the English departments are. actually discussing only british literature we have already kind of transgressed the path and started reading indian writing and so many other papers including children's literature so where do the thin line of uh, literature in english or oh, sorry english department and the comparative literature department exist or uh, is there a need for a comparative literature department or uh, that 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 is something a bit confusing so that is my first con concern and the second concern is uh, so while doing it while doing a phd or while applying for a phd i hold an ma in english and right now i'm doing an ma in comparative literature so the employability of english seems to be a bit more than that of cl is that a myth or is there any bit of truth in it thank you yeah hi mr nice meeting you uh, and uh, the second part Like it's not really related to our dissertation discussions. I just give answer them briefly. So uh, the second part of the discussion uh, was mainly uh, the, about the employability. Right? Uh, it's true that comparative literature has uh, less employability options because comparative literature was is not uh, recognized as an um, Uh, as widely as English literature across departments uh, in India, that's one reason. Even in Kerala, we had barely like uh, three or four comparative literature departments, is according to my idea. So that's one part of uh, this because we have less employability because we have less institutions and less recognition in the official sense. Uh, and the first part of it. Uh, the simplest way to understand comparative literature is like uh, CL or comparative literature put things in a comparative perspective. Uh, English literature in the uh, sense of you know British literature gives importance to British words. Uh, on the other hand, IWL or English Indian and World literature they they look at writing and world of And it says from the post-colonial or IW or like an African or Indian perspective. So it's a matter of perspectives, comparative sense. The perspectives are comparative, so that's the fundamental idea. And comparative has a methodology. It it has a comparative ethics to begin from. Uh, but apart from that, you can say that uh, nowadays English literature is doing a lot of things. Uh, the post uh, IW people are doing a lot of things. And comparative is doing the same thing. So, in that idea of functionality, there is a lot of you know uh, overlaps that I agree. But uh, it, what makes it different is the methodology, the comparative ethics, the comparative, the fundamental idea of comparative perspective, etc. We can have a detailed discussion about this later. I hope. Uh, but if you have any detailed questions related to the uh, idea of dissertation and present, like the ideas they present, it's so on. Hi, Vishnu. What's that? Yeah. Oh yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, probably, I think uh, I'm, uh, that that was my only question. And the second thing was regarding the tool tools to analyze tools of analysis of research. Uh, so I have a difference uh, with your uh, opinion. Maybe only regarding this this point. Uh, one is that you told me you told us that uh, we have limited sources when compared to sciences and we may have to uh, limit ourselves when it comes to analysis but 
uh, theory as a tool can be used right we we do use theory as a tool in research analysis so uh, do we have to really limit ourselves because we do not have experimental basis uh, to do uh, research in social sciences mm, then what i said is that the methodologies are different and the idea of analysis in science is different from the idea of analysis in literature so when it comes to theory uh is theory something that just theory work in the same way as it works in science for example i can say that gravity is like a theory introduced by isaac newton so that gravity is true everywhere in the world right in india we experience the same gravity in america in britain we experience in the, the same gravity but when i say that uh, when i use uh, the idea of uh, post colonial works have specific features that's a theory when i say that these specific works belong to the post colonial category and they have some commonalities but this in mean uh, that the specific set of features are applicable to every colonial every work produced in colonial countries across the world because literature itself is intrinsic in itself is unique each work is unique each experience is unique so uh, science theory in science is generalizable it is meant to generalize but literature is all about looking at experience at the unique um in that way theory works in a different way in it is so we have to be careful about the methodologies is that i meant that part oh well uh, thank you sir thank you thank you any other people questions we can conclude the session then okay what about the organizers akshayan Lulu, yes, ma'am. Let's conclude the session now. Okay, ma'am. After proposing vote of thanks. Thank you for such an informative session. I think such a session will help all the participants in their future research. We are at the very last moment of the session. Now I would like to call upon Atira Shankar to convey the vote of thanks to all. Thank you. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, yes, Tatiya, you are audible. Respected dignitaries, teachers, friends. As we all knew, this workshop and research methodology has provided us with a cornucopia of ideas that shines light on the intricacies and possibilities of research. In this auspicious occasion, the duty vested upon me is to deliver the word of thanks, and I consider it an honor 
to have such an opportunity. I thank respected Rafid sir on behalf of everyone gathered here for having provided us with such an insightful talk. You have actually unburdened us by deciphering the guardian note of research methodology. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sparing your valuable time for us. Thanks a lot, sir. Now, let me express my sincere gratitude to the Yes India team and Al Farooq for arranging such a great platform for us. Thank you very much. I would also like to thank our beloved Regina ma'am, Akshay sir, and all the other coordinators who have worked tirelessly, also Ms. Chana and Lulu. Without you all, we wouldn't have had such a great opportunity. Thank you. This won't be complete without thanking all the participants who have shown exceptional attentiveness.